This is the entry in Scott's journal for December the 18th, 1825. After several days and indeed weeks of mounting tension due to the evolving financial crisis in London, Scott had a visitor on that morning which announced that he had failed financially and that the crash was upon him. This is his entry for the journal of that fatal morning. Ballantyne called on me this morning. Venit illa suprema dies, my extremity is come. Cadell has received letters from London which all but positively announce the failure of Hurst and Robinson, so that Constable and Co. must follow, and I must go down too, with poor James Ballantyne for company. I suppose it will involve my all. I have been rash in anticipating funds to buy land, but then I made from five thousand to ten thousand pounds a year, and land was my temptation. Men will think pride has had a fall. Let them indulge their own pride in thinking that my fall makes them higher, or seems so at least. I have the satisfaction to recollect that my prosperity has been of advantage to many, and that some at least will forgive my transient wealth on account of the innocence of my intentions and my real wish to do good for the poor. This news will make sad hearts at Darnick, and in the cottages of Abbotsford, which I do not nourish the least hope of preserving. The house has been my Delilah, and thus I have often termed it. And now the recollection of the extensive woods I planted, and the walks I have formed, from which strangers must now derive pleasure and profit, they will excite feelings likely to sober the gayest moments. I have half resolved never to see the place again. How could I tread my hall with such a diminished crest? How live a poor indebted man, where I was once the wealthy and the honoured? My children are provided. Thank God for that. I was to have gone there on Saturday, in joy and prosperity, to receive my friends. My dogs will wait for me in vain. It is foolish, but the thoughts of parting from these dumb creatures have moved me more than any of the painful reflections I have put down here. I find my dog's feet on my knees. I hear them whining and seeking me everywhere. This is nonsense, but it is what they would do, could they know how things are. Poor Will Laidlaw, poor Tom Purdy. This will be news to wring their hearts and many a poor fellow's besides, to whom my prosperity was their daily bread. Another person, Lady Scott, did not afford me all the sympathy I expected, perhaps because I seemed to need little support. Yet that is not her nature, which is generous and kind. She thinks I have been imprudent, trusting men too far. Perhaps so, but what could I do? I must sell my books to someone, and these folks gave me the largest price. I now view matters at their very worst, and I suppose that all must go to supply the debts of Constable. I fear it must be so. For myself, the magic wand of the unknown is shivered in my grasp. I must henceforth be termed the too well-known. The feast of fancy is over, along with the feeling of independence." It is a bitter thought, but if tears start at it, let them flow. To save Abbotsford, I would attempt all that was possible. My heart clings to the place I have created. There is scarce a tree on it that does not owe its being to me, and the pain of leaving it is greater than I can tell. I have about ten thousand pounds of constables for which I am bound to give literary value. But if I am obliged to pay other debts for him, I will take leave to retain this sum. There shall remain some ticklish questions of literary property among us. Once more, however, patience, cousin, shuffle the cards. I am glad Lockhart and Sophia are gone. Why, I cannot tell, but I am pleased to be left to my own regrets without being melted by condolences, though of the most seer and affectionate kind. Anne bears her misfortune gallantly and well with a natural feeling, no doubt, of the rank and consideration she is about to lose. Lady Scott is incredulous, and persists in cherishing hope when there is no grounds for hope. I wish it may not bring on the gloom of spirits which has given me such distress. Now I fear it more than what Constable or Cadell will tell me this evening. What a life mine has been! Half-educated, almost wholly neglected or left to myself, stuffing my head with the most nonsensical trash, 
undervalued in society for a time by most of my companions, getting forward, and held a bold and clever fellow, contrary to the opinion of all, who thought me a mere dreamer. Broken-hearted for two years, my heart handsomely pieced together again, but the crack will remain to my dying day. Rich and poor four or five times, once on the verge of ruin, yet open to new sources of wealth almost overflowing, and now taken in my pitch of pride, because London chooses to be in an uproar, and in the tumult of bulls and bears, a poor inoffensive lion like myself is pushed to the wall. And what is to be the end of it? God knows. And so ends the catechism.